I am in San Francisco to talk watches with none other than Scott from WatcherStreet.com. What up? What's up? All right, party people, welcome back to this hobby of ours. We are cruising around, what was this, Mill? Mill Gray. Mill Gray? Mill Gauss. I'm, I'm hanging around, yeah, yeah. I am so Rocky, and no Mill Gausses, Tudor, FXD, LHD, MOD by D and friends, and Scott is wearing? 1974 Tudor Submariner issued to the French Navy, or Marine National. Marine National. Uh, in case you have not seen my previous interview with Scott, he is a writer, uh, oh gosh, an incredible collector of many different watches, but he's got a super passion for the Marine National watches, not just the Tudors, but a whole handful of watches that were issued. But my first encounter with Scott was actually, you know me, I love me my watch books, and TGV had featured his book on one of his episodes. I was like, I gotta get me that book. And then I bought it, and years went by and let's see when did i reconnect okay years went by and then when i started thinking about doing my book yep. you released an episode documenting your journey of how you made your book and it was so incredibly inspiring and frankly a field guide for doing it i pretty much followed it to the letter for because you used one publisher who yeah. I will not mention, and then you switched <laughs> to a second publisher for your reasons. I did the exact same. I did the exact same switch because I was not happy with publisher one and their inability to get the registration. But I reached out to him. I was like, "Hey, man, awesome video. Can I pick your brain?" He's like, yeah, "Yeah, sure. What do you need, man?" Let's do it. Yeah. And uh, that's where we kicked off our friendship and kept in touch. And uh, you know, just been, had that fabulous interview. Got to learn all about his journey, and I've featured not only the Marine National book of his for review, but also the ZRC book. And ZRC Thank is you. released. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I love watch books. No one else is. <laughs> no one else is reviewing watch book club, so someone has to do it. And the internet is great. It just doesn't know everything, right? Yep. And what we're going to get to in a couple minutes is he is working on his next book which I am super excited to hear about. So, uh, yeah, what are you up to, my man? What's going on? Yeah, no, I'm um, feeling good. Um, I am excited about that next book. Um, basically, just a little recap, the, uh, the Marine National book had 34 uh, issued uh, watches and timepieces um, issued to the French Navy, uh, all from my collection. Um, right. It was a lot of fun to put together, but also, you know, kind of, was pretty costly to assemble all those watches <laughs> and no um, doubt. yeah so I wanted but there are so many more watches that uh, I would love to document and so I yeah. thought you know let's crowdsource this and I open it up to the community and said yeah. hey let's feature your Marine National watch in my next book That's and really, uh, if we can get really it going smart. it'll be like an encyclopedia of well. all the Marine National watches not just one example of a Tudor Submariner but all of the examples, serial number, the history of a given watch, um, just something for collectors. And yeah. so far, we've got about 100 submissions so far. Oh, that's awesome. Which is, you know, the original book only had 34. Yeah. So I, I'd like to get to 200 and then yeah. see about releasing volume one. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that, uh, isn't that funny how the fans are the ones putting in the work? Uh, <laughs> Tudor's not doing the work, Scott's doing the work. And I, I think I offered on the other video that if you needed someone to carry your bags through France <laughs> to go door to door asking people, hey, can we take some pictures of your watch, please? Uh, You're the my, guy. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay. totally the guy. I'm the garçon. Okay. <laughs> now, that would be amazing, dude. I, uh, I'm super excited. And part of this video also is to see if I can get him to give me an honorable mention for my left-hand drive mod. If for no other reason then, the only other watch people owner fan out there that has this is an actual marine national diver who ordered it from tudor so i have some fabulous photography i'll send that to him see if i can get a shoehorn into the book but i wanted my buddy to experience the watch uh, being that he's so passionate about them and 
You know who also likes this watch is Jacko from ndcstraps.com. And Jacko, you'll be very pleased to know I am wearing your NDC strap, your collab with Scott. Seriously, what other what other strap is going on this watch when I'm coming to meet you? Actually, <laughs> it, it lives on this strap yeah. to begin with. Thank you. How did you, um, I think that if you follow the channel, you know how I met Jacko. We bumped into each other on the Paul Thorpe live stream, just surreptitiously, and then we became fast friends, and I've been doing a handful of giveaways. He sent me a bunch of swag, a bunch of straps and stuff, and that's been my most popular giveaway series. Uh, so stuff. getting yeah. getting a lot of traction for that. But how did you meet Jacko? Yeah, it's a funny. Uh, so. I put together the book, the Marine National book, and included a section on straps uh, used by the French Navy. And I had a few of the original, uh, you know, elastic straps from like the, the parachute the vintage bag. ones? The, the, like the, like the vintage tab? ones, the ones sourced from the actual parachute bags that they would use. And I, that actually came from uh, NDC Straps' uh, predecessor. Uh, and, uh, oh, okay. And so, and, and so I reached out to uh, Jacko um, and just said, hey, by the way, like, just thought you'd, you'd like to know that uh, I'm going to be including uh, photos of these straps in my book. Just it's already done and happening. And he was just so enthusiastic, so supportive. I mean, you, you've talked yeah. with him. He's just, he's just got, a great... He's, he's got great energy, great... Great, great, great human being. A um, great person, great energy, great business acumen. Just very yeah, smart yeah. when it comes to realizing, hey, this is cool. I want to be a part of it. Yeah, definitely. And I think you see that with the number of collaborations he has. And, yep. and you know, I think the care he puts into it. Uh, <laughs> like, he, he does focus on quality. I mean, like, I had tried some yep. mods with some, uh, some of my own... Uh, homemade sewing and he, he put it very nicely. He's like, yeah, you know, like we can do a little bit better on the stitching, but he was very gentle, oh, that's which I funny. appreciated. So. Yeah, if I ever get over to uh, the UK, Jack, I will be paying you a visit, sir. Yes. Uh, very excited. Uh, I like his stealth version of the strap as well. Mm. I bought a couple of those. Yeah. All um, black. Yeah. Uh, to yeah. go on one of my, a couple of my Omegas uh, in addition. I think what's really funny about these straps, I don't know how it does it, but it fits 19, 20, 21, and yeah. 22, the same strap because of the, I guess, elasticity, but it also conforms eventually as well. So it doesn't, it, I mean, it looks perfect. Uh, yeah, they're very, very comfortable and just, yeah. I, I love the, the kind of utility. I actually kind of love that it just kind of, these were makeshift straps. They're like, hey, I, I could probably throw this on the strap. It's very utilitarian, yeah. like kind of out in the field. Yeah, um, yeah. so great. I strap. think the, uh, with the, we came up with a funny name for that rectangular clip. It's the, I put it in the video, I can't remember. It's like the M rectangular piece. <laughs> I'll have to insert a picture of it, but I came up with a military sounding name for that little thing. But it is more or less infinitely uh, sizable to wherever. And I guess especially if you're actually using it for diving, you would need to put it off the wet, wet suit, off the wetsuit onto the wrist. Yep. Good stuff. Yep. So I, you sent me that email where you wanted to loan me your brigade indefinitely without cost. <laughs> that's very strange, but I don't know if he was up late and drinking or if that's still on the table. But at some point, we maybe have to check out that Brege, uh chronograph is his, which was, uh, that, that watch was epically beautiful. Where did you find Thank that you. one from? Is that uh, well, private I, party? I, I have, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to have three Brege Type 20s. Uh, one of them, the one that is, is probably my favorite, is yeah. the one uh, issued to the CEB, which is like the, the French Air Force's like test flight center where oh, they're wow. testing the new planes. Um, and that one came from a collector in Hong Kong. And it was one of those ones where you know, he posted it on Instagram and and it was kind of, I kind of messaged him like, hey, if you ever are thinking of selling this, like, please, you know, remember know. me. Yeah. I kind of get dibs. And then maybe a year later, I, uh, he reached out to me and I always wonder, was it, you know, was he going to sell it or is it because I planted the seed, yeah. <laughs> right? But I've seen this happen where even people ask me about a watch that I think mm -hmm. I'd never sell and then you're like, kind of let it marinate a bit and then you oh, know, wow. a year later, you're like, yeah, let's do this. And 
it's really great when somebody wants is after that watch. Yeah. It's not a. It's it's not just a. Some they've been thinking thing. about it. Yeah. They they're really serious. They know what it is and kind of a you know respect it as the next steward of it. Um, yeah. And stewardship is a good word for it because there is a. I don't. I fa- famously, I famously don't bond well with new watches for mm-hmm. some reason and I there's no sense about it I mean, a lot of people want the first dent the first scratch to be their own I actually like the fact that if something has had been, you know had a life or even rough and ready I don't mind it as so long as I can use that to leverage the price down in the negotiation <laughs> uh, but it's there's something about selling a watch to someone who has earnestly been hunting it and you know that person's going to love it. Yeah. And it's like, I, the closest thing, it's not close, but the closest thing I can come up with is if you have a beloved dog who has six puppies, you want those puppies to go to good homes. Yeah. And I realize a watch is not a puppy, please do not hate on me in the comments. <laughs> but you want it to go somewhere where it's going to be loved, not thrown in a drawer, not you know turn around and flip for another yeah. 500 to someone else. Although it's their property, they can do whatever they want. But speaking generally, there's a honor to ownership, especially with the watches you collect. Mine are more pedestrian; they're more commercially well, available. But those are those are special pieces, and it's keeping track of them is, I think, a great thing you're doing. Yeah, and, and thank you. And I think uh, keeping track of them, these u- pretty unique watches, and that's happened where I'll let one go, and then you kind of miss it, or the yeah. the person I sold it to has had their uh, enjoyment and they're ready to let it go first place they're going to check is with me which I appreciate yeah, yeah. and, and I've Reynolds. bought I've bought some back and it's oh, really? one watch is like traded hands three times at like just the same price because we're not we're not trying to make money off each yeah. other it's just I, l- like, I love that notion you know, it was really yeah it was, so it was, it was really cool and it was just an easy like yeah okay and, you know and they've taken good care of it and yeah, yeah sure why not I, I adapted that to mine uh, my approach, like I learned it from a, a business colleague years ago. He had a an incredible guitar that was, uh, was a Martin, and it would have been a fifteen hundred, two thousand dollar guitar. It was in the office. I'm like, what's this doing? He's like, oh, I'm selling it to a friend. And I was into guitar ownership. I can't really play it. Uh, I like, oh, how much? Um, he's gonna give me three hundred bucks for it. I'm like, dude, this is worth easily fifteen hundred. He's like, yeah, but I paid three hundred. He's like, yeah, but it's nice. worth 1500 He's like, nice. yeah. He's, he's like, D, you don't have to make money off of your friends. <laughs> I was a very young man at the time, and that has stuck with me ever since. So by and large, when I'm selling watches to friends, I'm, I call it passing it through at cost. Unless there is some absurd thing associated to it. Like if I had to put a thousand bucks in on service, yeah. then I, I'll try to recoup that. But generally, that's, that's what you do with your watch bros. Yeah, I think, uh, and it, it's a great privilege to be able to sell to uh, you know, somebody you know, yeah. and, and that's going to enjoy it for sure. And to buy from somebody you know, because it's the... Oh, it's huge. It's, especially with something like that, it, it must be the wild, wild west in some sectors, dude. It totally is, and then it's also just increasingly rare to be able to buy a watch that you actually handled in the metal yeah. before, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, it's the one time... I think only once I, I was able to buy a watch, an MN watch, um, and hold it before I, I bought it. Like, oh, really? uh, and this I happened to walk into a, a dealer um, in uh, Carmel called Fortain. Uh, great people okay. over there. They yeah, I think they, you they're known for oh, yeah, yeah, they're known for you know they they sell modern Rolex and then also have a Patek boutique, but they have a vintage Rolex like section, which is very rare for dealers that also sell new yeah. Rolexes yeah. like they have some they worked it out anyway um, I walked in and just kind of looked down and saw this magnificent blue Tudor uh, with the daggers and dots configuration mm-hmm. it's in my book uh, it's okay. an MN82 but just kind of like as soon as I saw it, it was like the one ring I knew it was calling <laughs> I was like this watch is going to be mine but it was such a treat and a privilege to be able to hold it yeah. and really check it out and examine it open it up look at it uh, before uh, buying it right and nowadays it's more common where you're going to buy it remote and you have yep. to really trust uh, the, the buyer you're buying it from no doubt. Uh, or the, the seller you're buying it from yeah. 
So in addition to the forthcoming book, how much longer do you think you'll gather references before you start doing the work of the book, would you, would you guess? How much more? Because hopefully some viewers who are seeing this, who are interested in sharing that history, might come along for the ride. A couple yeah. more months or a year? What do you say? I, I think it's going to be at least six more months. Okay. Um, you know, I, and I tried to imagine what it was going to be like putting this book together and, and to kind of build that into my disclaimer when yes. I'm collecting all this information just saying, hey, look, like, one, this project, I think it's going to be a book. I expect it to be a book, but maybe it's going to be a website. I don't know, right? Maybe mm. something changes. Um, hey, this might take six months. It could take a year. Like, I'll let you know yeah, yeah. every step of the way. Uh, it's trying to build some some room in there. And so far, the community has been very responsive. And it's kind of, you know, I think it's the summer months now um, in the northern hemisphere. And, yeah. and the people are kind of on vacation, not really thinking yeah, about yeah. it. But um, uh, we've got some great watches that, to share. And just it was, it was so nice that people were willing to, yeah, like, let's, let's share this information about uh, these watches, the history they know about them. Um, yeah, so I just appreciate the support of the community. Awesome. So other than the book, what other projects you got going on? Do you have any, uh, what's for sale on the website? You still have any of these straps in case someone uh, wants one of these straps? I do have a few of the straps less, left, maybe okay. uh, four or five, oh, uh, all right. which is good. And, and I think um, uh, it, it was a lot of fun to, to make these two uh, with NDC. Um, he can do custom stuff, right? I, I saw yeah. that, and I'm I'm pondering putting getting some uh, getting a couple with my logo on it because I just love having stuff with my logo on it. Plus, it's also it's Jacko, right? So it's going to be <laughs> yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, so it's probably pretty simple for you guys to work that out. Definitely, definitely, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, I think we're going to grab a bite to eat here on the West Coast. We're going to do some watch yapping off camera. I want to say thank you to Scott for making the time to come hang out and talk with me. Uh, always a pleasure, brother. And I uh, also want to say thank you for coming along on the ride in this wonderful, beautiful hobby of ours. We will catch you in the next one. Peace. If you'd like to support the channel, head over to hobbyofours.com. We've got artwork, coffee mugs, hats, t-shirts, and even a watch book. 1001 Watch Designs, Volume 1. Over 1,000 designs in here. Steampunk, super futuristic, kaleidoscope. Even super real ones, watches that you could probably put on your wrist today. It's a great way to support the channel. Thanks for coming along on the ride.